It's not very often that I can say that I'm about to do something for the very first time on this channel. Because when it comes to the world of FPV drones, I've kind of already done most of the things that there are to do. But today, we're not building an FPV drone. At least not in the sense that I usually think of it. This is the Holy Bro Development Kit. And what makes this so interesting, aha, here it is. What makes this so interesting is the flight controller. The flight controller that comes with this kit is the Pixhawk 6X. And what makes it different is that it doesn't run Betaflight or any of the other firmwares that we typically associate with FPV drones. It runs Pixhawk firmware. Because this kind of quadcopter can do things that FPV drones can't. Things like loiter, things like fly a GPS mission, things like fly through the air without having to be manually controlled all the freaking time. And there are a lot of commercial and industrial drones out there that need the kind of capabilities and performance that this flight controller has, that flight controllers like Betaflight that are traditionally found on FPV drones simply don't have. Oh, did I mention reliability? This flight controller has redundant sensors, dual gyros, dual accelerometers, dual compasses. It's got two of just about everything and the ability to detect if one of those isn't working and then figure out how to like not have the drone crash. This is a whole new level of capability. And it just seems a shame that I'm completely unfamiliar with it. I hate it when there are things I don't know how to do. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. The first thing I want to say before I get into this build is that the reason I have selected the Holy Bro development kit is that I want to spend as much time and energy as possible learning about Pixhawk and as little time and energy as possible actually building the gosh darn drone. I have put together a lot of drones in my day and that's not sort of fun or exciting or novel. That's not novel to me. Uh, and the Holy Bro development kit really makes it as easy as possible. At least that's the promise. I've never built one before. And so we're gonna find out together. Inside the kit, we do have the Holy Bro Pixhawk 6X flight controller. This is the highest end version of this flight controller. There are some cheaper, less capable ones, but I figured if I was gonna go, I was gonna go all the way whole hog. Uh, one of the things that makes Pixhawk flight controller is so interesting is that the interfaces, that is the inputs and outputs, are standardized for all Pixhawk flight controllers. Unlike Betaflight or iNav flight controllers where there's just a whole bunch of solder pads and plugs and they're different for every flight controller. And so the process of plugging in your peripherals is different for each of them. With these Pixhawk flight controllers, this is this interface layout itself is actually an open source standard and you can get multiple flight controllers that all share the same interface. And what that means is that when it comes time to hook up the peripherals, like the receiver and the GPS, there's not gonna be any big troubleshooting flowchart about where you plug them in, you're just gonna plug them in. And that's pretty freaking cool. We've also got in this kit a set of telemetry radios. These are 900 megahertz and they are used to transmit a long distance data link back to a ground station software running on a computer. We are used to, in the FPV world, having our telemetry connection be shared with our control link. But in the case of, of Pixhawk, it's often a separate radio so that if you, for example, lose your control link for some reason, you could still use the long distance data link to control the quad, to, for example, to put in a waypoint or issue a command to return to home and so forth. This is a difference in the way of thinking between these semi-autonomous or autonomous uh, drones and the sort of manually controlled drones that FPV pilots more commonly use. With manually controlled drones, if you lose your control link, you're just done. There's nothing more for the drone to do. With this style of flight controller, that is not the case. In fact, sometimes they're even flown just with the ground station software, with no controller whatsoever. It's kind of blowing my mind. I am super happy that the motors come pre-installed on the arms, ready to go. Gonna save me some trouble there. No soldering or any nonsense like that. We do have instructions here for assembling it, but it looks like we don't have to. I am always extremely happy when manufacturers separately bag and label their screws so that I can easily refer to the instructions, find the bag of screws, and know I have the correct screws for this step. 
It's a small thing, but it definitely makes a difference. Here we come to the first time where it seems like the instructions don't exactly line up with the hardware that I've got. This looks like uh, the power distribution board. I can see here that it's got a soldered on XT60 battery lead, and it looks like these are the solder pads where the ESCs would go, the, the power to the ESCs would go. In our case, our power distribution board, or PDB, looks like this. It comes pre-soldered, and it has plugs instead of solder points. I'm thinking I, this, this must be what it's referring to, even though it doesn't exactly match up with what we've got pictured in the instructions. And it looks like the XT60 lead is facing the side of the drone with this platform. So it would face back and it would line up with these holes here and have some standoffs underneath it. Um, this probably would have been easier to do if I had done it before. Oh yeah. If I had done it before installing it, because now I won't be able to get my screw. Yeah, I'm going to take this battery plate off, sadly, so I can get my screwdriver in here. Can I just pop it off? Yeah, I can. Don't need to unscrew it. It'll just pop off, won't it? I think it will. Please don't break. Please don't break. It's always a good sign, isn't it? You're just shouting, please don't break, in the middle of a build. <laughs> um, all right. And then the feet are going to go on. I think I have to loosen this first. Yeah. Okay, don't drop that nut, though. Oh, drop the nut. Hmm. You want to... What am I doing? Oh, there's another screw. There's a third screw I have to loosen. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Can it loosen up now? Yeah, I can. Great. I guess these are sized correctly that they'll squeeze the arms with the right amount of force and they can't really over tighten and crush the carbon. You would think, but I'm probably going to do it by hand just to be safe. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, <sighs> this is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh huh. I can tell. I can already tell. Okay, we got this. I'm gonna go. Does this just snap on? Oh, that's nice. Oh, the, um, um, no. Does it? Does it have little clippy clips that snap it on? It do sort of does. It sort of does. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. That's actually pretty slick. Let me show you what I just discovered. Each of the leg pieces has these little retention clips that lets you install this and it stays on the leg and then it just stays in one piece so you don't have, to have it all falling apart on you while you're uh, while you're screwing it on. That's very good, that's very good. I'm, I'm happy about that. Good thinking, holy bro. So we'll do that first. And I love that there's a little indexing nub. Anytime you've got round carbon fiber arms, there's a chance that they'll twist and rotate in the mount and then the motors won't be square to the frame. So they've got little holes drilled and little indexing nubs on these blue brackets to help make sure the arms stay aligned correctly. That's that's smart. It's not like groundbreaking, but a lot of some frame designers would have overlooked it. Three, still going to be annoying. It doesn't matter. This is just for power, so it doesn't matter where these get plugged. Oh, it's nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's just set up for a hexacopter. That's nice. It doesn't matter where these get plugged because that's just power. So you can plug them in to any of these XT30 connectors. Doesn't matter. And then, hmm. Let's go right side up. Yeah, this is still going to be kind of annoying. How am I going to do this? Can I just do it one at a time and just have it be loose? If I just stick them through, will it kind of hold? Maybe it'll just hold. Oh, it kind of will. I bet it will. Okay, this is turning out to be less annoying than I had feared. Nice. I already tell I'm going to kind of wish the top of this was off while I'm wiring things up. Like, for example, here is the main battery lead, and I believe that this device here is probably a current sensor, and that's going to plug into the flight controller. Oh, power. Yeah, power output for the flight controller. So, probably... We're going to want to tear into this bag of doohickeys that came with the flight controller. And we're going to want to find the plug that goes with that. Oh my god, there's so many plugs. Uh, oh, that looks, that looks promising. Yeah, it looks like a power plug. Let's see here. 
Oh, yeah. See? The beauty of standardization. There's no way for me to have gotten this wrong. <laughs> Just plug right in. No soldering? No nothing. I'm going to need to... There we go. Plug that into the PDB right there, which I kind of should have done before I... Oh, is it going to go up through the bottom? I think it is. This is the end that the battery is going to come out and go to the battery. So this is going to go like so. I think so. Does it just go like this? No, oh, it sticks out a little. Far. Oh, okay. It goes like this. Yes. This is the kind of thing that would have been good to do. Before, oh, before I put all this shit together, uh, we'll make her work. Just fish all this in here. Oh, please tell me I can do this without having to take the top off. Shut up. Shut up. Why would you show me to put the top plate on before? Uh, oh, it's going to go. Huh? Ah, it's going to go. Oof. Oh, what if we... Oh, okay, I got it. What if we feed the XT60 through? Yes. What if we fish the XT60 through like this? Aha! Then install this piece. Then pull it back through. Well, that sounds like a good idea. A lot of things sound like a good idea until you find out they're stupid. Now, haha. Ha. Now I have to plug this one into the PDB. There is no way I will be able to show you video of me doing that, so you'll have to take my word for it. Okay, got it. Uh, the GPS mount. Makes sense. Does that have a nut? No, it just goes right into the plastic. Yeah, it does. Okay, so we won't over tighten and we won't strip that out. Okay. Oh, there we go. OCD person inside me wants these screws to be lined up. GPS is mounted with this 3M double-sided adhesive that comes with the kit. We'll just save that and we'll mount the GPS later. It's a little... I'm a little uh, less than thrilled with that. But I guess you're not really supposed to crash this thing anyway, so... If you crashed it, you already done screwed up, huh? And we're going to mount this like so with the remaining M3 screws and M3 lock nuts. Ha! The frame's built! Ta-da! That took uh, one hour and 15 minutes is how long I've been recording. So I've heard people say you can build it in as little as 20 minutes. Well, maybe that's true for them. The next thing i got to do is figure out to the whole the flight controller. There's, uh, there's no instructions for that part. <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. I guess the first thing I'm going to do is take this here old piece of VHB tape that came with the flight controller and stick the flight controller onto the plate, the frame plate, or the top plate. Uh, is there a front facing arrow? There is a front facing arrow, so presumably that needs to face the front. We'll get that nice and lined up, good and square. Have I installed, oh, I installed this plate wrong. This plate's supposed to be rotated this direction. It's not going to matter because we're not screwing our flight controller down. If we were screwing our flight controller down, then we would need to have rotated this plate so it faces the correct direction. But we're just going to tape it down. And that ain't going, that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere. That VHB tape will hold till kingdom come. Stands to reason that this guy is going to go in power one. Oh, those would be great to pass these wires through. But I'm not taking 16 dang screws out for this nonsense. I am not doing it. I am not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. FMU PWM out. Is that the motors? Or is it IO PWM out? I don't know. I will have to look it up. I don't want to look up instructions. I just want to know how to do everything already. <sighs> Learning is lame. Can I go like this? Like the side? Oh, yeah, that's good. Could I have done that with this thing? Probably could have. Let's try it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see? Just, I'm going to make sure that the fact that I mounted this board side, uh, plate sideways is 
not going to come back and bite me. You see, kids, the reason I prefer to mount this top plate cocked 90 degrees sideways, it gives you the flexibility to come in from either side. And in my experience, uh, that is uh, that flexibility opens up some possibilities for wire routing that uh, is better. <sighs> Okay, uh, good. We got the GPS. Uh, wow, I'm nearly, what is this nonsense? Oh, that's the radio. Yeah, I gotta figure out where to put that. GPS. It's gonna go forward facing. Okay, no problem. Okay, and let's see if there's a label for the GPS. GPS 1. Great. Well, that's what I assume this is gonna be. GPS 1. Oh my god. No soldering, no looking up wiring diagrams. Just click, done. Now I feel like I might ought to like zip tie this. Maybe not. Pixhawk 6S, where to plug motors. Motors and servos are connected to the IO PWM out main and FMU PWM out aux ports. IO PWM out main. IO PWM out. There we go, it's labeled right there. And therefore we're gonna go one, Ooh, let's see. Oh, that's marked on the side. Okay. My long ago days when I worked with servos, I mean, it's labeled right here, minus, plus, and S. Uh, uh, minus is ground, and it's going to go on bottom. S is on top. We're just going to go like so. Minus on, so black on bottom, white on top. M1, M2. Next up, the telemetry radio. There is no indication and the instructions and where to put it. It comes with a piece of 3M sticky. This is a USB adapter, for, presumably for your computer. And we've got the radio, telemetry radio. And I don't think it matters. They're already paired up and I don't think it matters which one goes on the computer and which one goes on the, yeah, they're identical. So clearly this side has the, uh, the GX connector, I think it is, with the locking plug. There's only one way to do that. And then where does it go on the Pixhawk 6X telemetry radio plug? Holy bro, Pixhawk 6X wiring quick start. Oh, that's convenient. Telemetry radio goes to telem1, but that's not the right plug. Oh, they're not identical. I see. This one has two of the GX connectors that had the wrong cable. Telem1 and boom. Love it. We're going to put this. I guess it doesn't matter. Let's put it anywhere. Maybe it does matter. I have no idea. I'm so out of my depth. I love it. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've felt this <laughs> completely out of my depth. Hey there, folks. It's Joshua from the future. I have just spent an hour trying to figure out how to get a Express LRS receiver working with this flight controller. And I'm going to tell you where I've come to, but I'm also going to tell you a deeper insight that I think is important that we keep in mind, that I keep in mind for sure. First, I discovered that there's two firmwares that this flight controller can run. One is Pixhawk or PX4, but that's also the name for a flight controller. Anyway, and the other is ArduPilot. And when you're looking at documentation for how to do things, they don't have the same feature set. The ArduPilot documentation doesn't apply directly to Pixhawk. So the first thing I learned was that Pixhawk doesn't support Crossfire. <laughs> Just so all the documentation I was finding that said, oh, here's how you get Crossfire working on this flight controller only works if you're running ArduPilot. So then I flashed ArduPilot and I came to this other insight, which is that ArduPilot technically does support Crossfire and ExpressLRS, but it's a giant pain in the ass and I couldn't get it working even though I followed all the instructions I could think of how to follow. And in the end, here's what I did. I wired up the receiver to a standard servo plug and we're gonna use SBUS, which is what the flight controller expects you to be doing. And the deeper lesson is this. When you show up and you're the new guy in town and you don't know the sort of norms and standards when in Rome, do as the Romans do, as they say. It turns out that the kind of uh, multirotors that fly this flight controller usually use SBUS. They're not racing drones. They don't need an ultra, ultra low latency control link, and everything is set up around the use of SBUS or a Spectrum uh, receiver. 
and uh, trying to like going, no, that's not the way we do it. And then trying to shoehorn myself into that situation was just making me miserable. I'm sure it can be done, but instead I'm going to try to fit myself into the box and then, and then once I've made myself comfortable in the RG pilot box, then maybe I'll start thinking about ways to break out of the box. But the first thing you got to do when you're the new guy in town is settle in and fit in and see how things are and why they are the way they are. Instead of showing up and going, I don't like this. This isn't how I want them to be and trying to shake, shake the, the, the apple cart, as it were. Now it's time to set up the flight controller. And in order to do that, I've downloaded this piece of software, Q Ground Control. Q Ground Control is going to be used to flash firmware to the flight controller and configure the flight controller. And then in addition to that, once the quadcopter is actually flying, it can be used to manage the quadcopter during flight. Again, this is not like an acro drone where the way that we fly it is to manually fly it with our RC controller. This is a autonomous or semi-autonomous drone where we can just go into Q ground control and click where we want it to go and sort of manage it with a little more hands-off uh, way. But that's going to be for after we finish the configuration and we get the dang thing in the air. I've been working at this for several hours now and uh, have failed many times. And you're now going, I didn't want to make you watch two hours of me failing to get it working. And so you're going to now benefit from sort of the fruits of my failures. And the first thing I ended up doing was changing the firmware on the flight controller. So this piece of hardware is known as the a PixHawk 6X flight controller, and it runs a piece of firmware called PX4, but PX4 can also be hardware. And there's another firmware out there called ArduPilot that also runs on this hardware that I have decided is right for me to use. And the reason for that is that in general, ArduPilot seems to have more documentation, more tutorials out there for it than PX4. So every time I was searching for, well, how do I do this or how do I do that? I came across an ArduPilot tutorial and then I ended up asking MadsTech, Ian Lewis, for help with something. And he also uses RG Pilot, and so I'm just like, okay, I see which way the wind is blowing. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we are going to actually unplug USB, and we are gonna go to the firmware update page in Q Ground Control, and then we're going to plug in USB, and that is how we initiate a firmware update. And we're gonna choose RG Pilot and multi-rotor, and the board type is gonna be PixHawk 6S. And then we're gonna hit okay, and it's gonna flash the firmware. So in order to confirm that you've got the same firmware version as me, you're gonna to go to the summary tab in Q Ground Control and look, and you should see firmware version 443. But everything else is completely unconfigured. So let's get started. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the frame uh, tab, and we're gonna click and tell it that we have a quadcopter here, and the frame type is X. That's correct, that is the motor layout and frame type that we've got. There is no save button. These changes just seem to take effect as soon as you make them. So don't worry about that. Although some, as you may have seen in that message, some of these changes will require a reboot in order for uh, them to actually take effect. Next, we're gonna go to the radio tab and we're gonna hope that we've got movement of our sticks as I move my sticks we should see the channels and joysticks moving. Um, you probably don't. Uh, and the reason for that is if you're doing Express LRS like I am, or if you're doing Crossfire, you need to go into the Express LRS or the Crossfire Lewis script and configure the receiver to output SBUS instead of the Crossfire protocol that it normally does. In order to get your Express LRS receiver to output SBUS, we're going to go into the Express LRS Lewis script. We're gonna need the receiver turned on and bound. And if we do that, down here at the bottom, we can find other devices. And sure enough, right there is our receiver. Then we'll go into the receiver options. And right here at the top, we have the protocol option. And we can click and we can change that to SBUS. And that will cause our receiver to output SBUS on the TX pin and make it work with the uh, Pixhawk flight controller. Oh, incidentally, I think you might need to be on Express LRS 330. Uh, it used to be that this option didn't exist. So if you don't see that option there, you may be on too old of a version of Express LRS. Just go check and see if it's there. And if it's not, you may need to update your firmware. But you can see here, I do in fact 
to have movement. And the next thing I'm going to do is calibrate. Okay. And we're going to go through these steps, lower the throttle stick all the way down and we'll hit next, move the throttle stick all the way up. The next thing we're going to do is go to the sensors tab and calibrate some of the sensors on the flight controller. And you can see some of these are marked as red indicating they need to be calibrated. So we'll start with the accelerometer. Yep, that's correct. We will start with hold still the current rotation press next one ready. Okay, great. Uh, where is next? There it is. Next. Okay. And we want to be nose out and on the right side. I'm going to try and hold this as close to 90 degrees as I can. Next. Nose out and on the left side. Or the right side, actually. Left side. Like it shows in the picture. Okay. Going back to the sensors here. We can't calibrate the compass here inside on the desk, so we're going to have to skip that one. And everything else seems good to go. Next, let's go to the Flight Modes tab and set up our switches, basically. Uh, and there are two main switches that it seems like the flight controller wants us to set up. One of them is the Flight Mode, which is things like Acro, you know, Stabilized Mode, GPS Assist, Loiter, etc. And we can see here that we can have up to six Flight Modes, but I think I'm going to keep things simple and just have three of them. One, two, three, because I've got a three position switch. That's a two position switch, three position switch right here. Um, and it wants the flight mode to be on channel five. You'll see here that I've got my flight mode channel set as channel six, whereas the default is channel five. And the reason for that is that I'm using Express LRS and Express LRS forces channel five to be a two position switch, which must be used for arming and arming must be high and disarm must be low. That is a mandatory requirement when using Express LRS. There, they have reasons for that. We're not going to go into them right now. So we can't use channel five as our flight mode channel. We have to use something else. So I've set it to channel six. And if we look here, as I move channel six, we can see, look, notice that flight mode one is yellow. I can see I've got it set for stabilize, position hold, and Loiter. I don't know. I may tweak that. Uh, you'll also notice I'm not using flight modes two and five and three because I would just have a three position switch and it's easy to use. I could always use something else if I wanted more. I've also got channel seven's option as return to launch. Uh, and I've got that set up on switch SD right here. So at any time I pull that switch and I think it'll override the flight mode and force a return to home. I don't know. That's how I felt like setting it up. Uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to set channel five to be the arm disarm channel. And in order to do that, we can't do that here. We have to go to parameters and manually, uh, I believe if I type RC5 here, yes, we can see RC5 option is set to unknown. It should just be arm, arm disarm. Why is it unknown? That's weird. Save. That's weird. It was working too. Anyway, we want RC5 option set to arm disarm and that will give us arming on, let's see here. What about this telemetry radio? We're gonna get this telemetry radio working. So we'll get this other telemetry radio here and do we just unplug the USB here from the, there we go. Oh, now it's not powered up. I need to power it up. We'll plug this one in and I think this should just work. We've got a blinking green LED here. I mean, I guess that's going to go solid when they link up. There we go. Solid. It's talking. Do we need to... Oh, look at that. Sick radio on COM3 auto connect. Communication lost. Can we communicate? Oh my gosh. I think it's working. Is it working? Like if I move the quad, does the compass? It does. <gasps> USB. I will never USB again. Okay. Well, this is the first time I've truly been impressed with this stupid thing. <laughs> um, let's see here. The radio is working. That just automatically worked. Fantastic. Now that we've finished building and configuring the quadcopter, the only thing to do is give it a test flight. And I cannot wait to find out how good this freaking thing is compared to something like a DJI drone, which has many of the same capabilities, if not more.
we'll go ahead and plug, wait, con the controller needs to be on first. Is it on? It is on. Ah. Woo. So, oh, they're already talking. We'll go ahead and plug this in and turn it on and we will hold down this button on the GPS, which is the safety switch that prevents it from taking off and spinning the motors before you are ready. And we can see that the computer has already picked up on the drone. Uh, we're running the Q ground control software here and we've got this 900 megahertz radio here, uh, which is passing the connection through, just automatically picked it up and ready to fly. We are ready to go, except that's because we're in stabilized mode. There we go. Now we're starting to get some GPS satellites. We'll be ready to fly even in GPS assisted mode. Loiter flight mode. Yeah, see if I switch to loiter flight mode, it says not ready um, because we don't have enough GPS locks yet. But in stabilized mode, we could mode. take off. Um, so let's give it a try. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take off in stabilized mode and see how well it flies. Oh, motors are spinning. Let's raise the throttle and start to lift off. Oh, it's getting light. Why is it tipping like, okay, there we go. That's not great. Oh, there we go. We're hovering, boys. We're drifting a little because of the wind, but we are hovering. We have a maiden. And if I sit her down and lower the throttle, will it automatically disarm? No. I'll disarm it manually. Whew, okay, okay. Well, it seems like the accelerometer could use a little bit of calibration because it kind of tipped like that, but no big deal. Let's, uh, let's do something that we can't do with a beta flight flight controller. Let's put it into- Acro flight mode. No, not acro, loiter mode. Loiter, flight mode. loiter mode means that it is gonna try to hold position exactly precisely. And it's only got a GPS that it can use to do that. It doesn't have things like an optical flow sensor, which is what DJI uses to uh, be like super locked in when it's close to the ground or inside. Uh, Pixhawk does support optical flow sensors. I just haven't put one on this drone. Let's see how well it hovers. All right, we're gonna lift her straight off. Uh, oh, I see, I see. We are no longer in direct control of the motors. At 50% throttle, it just kind of stays where it is. If I raise the throttle, it'll start to climb. Oh God, it is drifting. Why is it drifting like that? That's not good. It's all over the place. Come on, do better. Eh, it's still drifting. Come back, come back, baby. Don't climb, descend a little. Okay, now stay in place, stay, hover, hover. It's descending. It's getting a little close to the ground. Let's see if we can get it to climb. Climb a little. Okay, there we go. It's really drifting. Come on, figure it out. Figure it out. You're drifting. Figure it out. You got 18 satellites. Why are you drifting? Get back there. Okay, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Eighteen satellites. It should have pretty good precision. The um, altitude is done primarily with a barometer, which can be less than perfectly precise. It's normal to see some drift in altitude um, because, like, the movement of the props causes the air pressure to change. If you really want locked-in altitude control, you need something like a, a downward-facing rangefinder, which again, the flight controller does support. I just don't have one. Okay, hands off the controls. Hands off the controls. No hands on the controls. How's she doing? Oh, she seems to be 18 sats still. Seems to be doing better. Should like really stay within like a, like a three meter box for sure. For anybody who's concerned about the fact that my uh, GPS location is being broadcast, it's okay, please don't freak out. I've had races and other events at my house. Uh, this is a fact of life that I accept as a consequence of being a content creator. Thank you for your concern. It's doing okay. Like if it were, you know, why it's drifting though. It's getting, come back. Why are you getting further away? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
Where do you think you are? I mean, it's not bad. It's doing okay. Oh, get back, come back, come back, come back. Okay, okay. You know what's even cooler is that I can actually completely configure this flight controller. If I go in here, I can configure this flight controller in its entirety through this wireless link. This is a full connection, everything on the flight controller. I don't need to plug in USB like ever again, as long as I have this radio. Can you flash over this? I'm not sure if you can flash. Maybe you can even flash. Wouldn't put it past him. You know, normally when I build a quadcopter, it's because I'm excited to fly it. High performance racing and freestyle drones that you can tear around the sky. This isn't that. This is a tool for getting a job done. And in a way, the experience of finally maidening it was a little bit underwhelming. It just kind of sat there and waited for me to tell it what to do. And that's something you gotta keep in mind if you're thinking about building a platform like this. The reason to get this development kit and build a platform like this is because you want to get more familiar with the kind of tools that people building large industrial drones, some cine lifters and so forth. You wanna get familiar with the flight controller that is almost universally used on those great big drones. If you've got a small 10 or maybe even a 13 inch cine lifter and you want high performance out of it, you're probably gonna use a Betaflight flight controller. But the bigger and more expensive the drones you're flying and the bigger and more expensive the payloads you're flying, like big expensive cinema cameras, the more you're gonna to wanna to lean into a flight controller that doesn't just fall out of the freaking sky the minute that something goes wrong, and that's this. If you're interested in delving into this world, I've got links down below to this development kit. And I think it is a great way to get into the world of PixHawk. All of the hardware is ready to go, it's easy to assemble, and you can focus, like I did, on learning about the flight controller and less on kind of building the platform. I'm really excited to continue to explore what we could do with this platform. Could we add an optical flow sensor? Could we add a downward facing rangefinder? Could we add, like, a camera? Ooh, putting a camera on a drone. That's a novel idea, isn't it? I'm gonna start a playlist of PixHawk related stuff that I do with this drone, and I'm not sure how often I'll update it or how many additional stuff, uh, how much additional content I'll make, but as I do, I'll add it there, and hopefully you can keep an eye out and enjoy that. Let me know. What kind of cool things can this flight controller do that I don't know about that you'd like to see me explore? I'll see you in the next one.